it up like Jay Brock. Cause I can score with a second on the clock. So you would take a trip to Budapest. Um, what is where is Budapest? Budapest is in Hungary in the middle of Europe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes. I'm like, I, I never heard of this place before. Yes. Um, but what type of when you do get to travel like uh-huh. that? Uh, what type of enlightenment do you receive when you get to see a whole different country? You know what I'm saying? Um, it is definitely so humbling. You know, it just makes me like want to quit everything and just travel the world because really? sometimes it's so filling to my soul. It's so rejuvenating, you know, yeah. uh, and so refreshing to be yeah. around just different people. I right. think everyone needs to like get out of their environment mm-hmm. um, just to shift up occasionally Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, let's take a quick second to give a shout out to our sponsor hey what's good right now you are in the studio section of the z room where you can record your next hit so it's time for you to pull up get with it or get lost let's go yeah go crazy uh i loved budapest and um i went with my dad on like some production stuff because my dad was he does you know, production. Um, so it was cool to like even see production on that level yeah, in that yeah. area. And I'm like, yeah. Oh wow. You know, so this, this like creativeness, this is just all around you. Yes. That well, being... uh, in different forms. I, you know, there's different forms of creativity in my family, yeah. but I think we're all kind of creative. That's dope. That's yeah. dope because, okay. So like, I don't have a relationship. I don't have a real relationship with my dad. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to his mom not too long ago, and she was like, "This is crazy that that you were doing the same thing that he does." Oh wow! You know what I'm saying, right? right. right. Like, yeah. well, not ex- well. He's not like a, he doesn't have a show or yeah. anything like that. But he's around celebrities. He was a oh. dancer, all that stuff. You know, gotcha. like he was just around the entertainment industry. Gotcha. And and my, even my mom said that like that's crazy that you were really into that. Like right. you know, like somehow, some way that just trans I don't know, transferred to me. Mm-hmm. And that's dope that that's how that is. Um so when you watching so when you watching your dad work like that, I mean how much inspiration does he provide for you? Because I know he is your biggest fan and he always encourages you to follow your dreams. Yes. So so he does animal training. So for okay. movies. So that oh, on wow. that side of production. Yeah. So Shout out to my dad, like um, like the wolves from Narnia are all his wolves, the True Blood wow. wolves, uh, Chico from Friday, you know what? Yeah, so he wow. he has famous, you know, dog animal or, or just wild animals, baboons, wow. uh, hangover monkey, like he. So I grew up in a zoo, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I divorced, but yeah. I grew up in a zoo okay. at my dad's house. So yeah. we would he, you know, he would always take me sometimes to um different movies they were shooting and I would get to see the production side of it. But you know, he would be with the animals and stuff like that. Wow. I would get to meet like just different people at that time. So I knew I was like, oh, this is I I need to I need my own trailer. <laughs> like I yeah. looking around is manifesting yeah. all the time. You Look know? <laughs> at that. It's crazy how many ways you can make your living. Yes. Uh, yes. Animal trainer for dog for, for animals that are in these big time movies. Yes. That we didn't see <laughs> over and over again. Right. You know what? I said, okay, there's just one lady, right? Her job is to fill in sounds for like sound bites for movies. Oh. So what she'll do is I don't know. They'll, they'll send her a scene. She'll put on some high heels uh, and she'll walk. And somebody will be recording her walking, and the sound will be recording see? the whole time. And it's like that's how she makes her living. That's dope. That's crazy because it's like, how do you get into stuff like that? You exactly. know what I'm saying? I, I think because he was doing something so far fetched. That's why when I started my show, yeah. I like my vision for where I wanted to take what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I think I was able to know that it was possible because I saw him being very successful in that beautiful. and how he like got into that and how mm. consistent he was. So That's was like, beautiful, okay. man. And and like she said, she grew up in a zoo. He lives yeah. with them. And you know yes. what? That's dope because <laughs> I mean, well, how much activity is going on with like what's your favorite animal? Uh, I love elephants. I okay. Love elephants. Okay. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah, I like elephants. Oh well, shout out to the yeah. elephants. You know, I'm a little too scared to walk <laughs> up on one, but shout out to the elephants, man. Yeah. I really don't know what my favorite animal would be. Um, 
Yeah, I don't I don't know if I have one. Do you actually. ever like resonate with certain animals? Like I might have been that animal my last <laughs> lifetime. You know Did what? You? Somebody put that in my head, like, you know, maybe people die and become animals. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? Or something like Nah, I don't think I've ever resonated with an animal. I, okay. you know, one thing I resonate with a lot of people. I I I, f- I tend to feel other people's feelings. So yeah. like if they go through something sad, sometimes I feel like like damn i feel sad with you oh, you know right. what i'm saying so that's one of my things that that's one of the things so i don't know you know that's i feel so like awesome. they're there i don't know if it's a pisces thing or whatever but you know we need people like you oh that's man awesome. you we know see the only thing the only thing i guess bothered me about myself was that i would be so sensitive yeah which is something that i have learned not to be so mm-hmm. you know especially in this industry you yeah. really can't be that sensitive right. but um a lot of the time even if i go through something that does feel like like it hurts so, you know like my thing is i practice on just just understanding that it did hurt yeah. you know what i'm saying you take the moment and you you get over it yeah. but you take that moment and you move on you know so shout out to that now you would take a trip to texas you know to see your grandparents and family you've never met before yes yeah, my great grandparents what were those <laughs> expectations like when you before you got there um well i always see my great they always usually come out you know to my area so mm. i'm very familiar with them but seeing like when my grandma grew up i'm actually going back in like two months to oh shout out to my grandparents again yeah. uh for the juneteenth that's uh, what's up yeah so it was cool it was cool and my family, be, they be so funny. They, like, think I'm a celebrity or whatever. Nah, you know what I mean? They make maybe, you feel good, though, huh? A little bit. You know, I'm like, I'm like manifesting. Okay. Yeah. Like, this, is what, this is what it feels like. Ah. Um, um, <laughs> I'm a star you know, in the family. Right. But, you know, like, because it's my great grandparents. Like, they yeah, see the littlest yeah. things. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God. Well, like, you know, yeah. and then the world is so, it's so much easier to make it on TV now yeah. than it was for them. You know, yes. you can simply get on YouTube and be on somebody's TV screen. Right. So I know that's something that they like, wow, I she's know. on TV. Look at her. <laughs> when the magazine dropped, like yeah. she was telling everybody yeah. at the school. Yeah, I mean, she, listen, oh she got a whole six pages in this magazine <laughs> that had dropped. It's Pump Magazine. Shout out to Pump yes. Magazine. She got a whole six pages. Talk about that experience getting into a magazine. It was so bizarre. Like, you know, it wasn't anything that I was had on my... Well, it kind of was, you know, I guess it's on... I Definitely was on a bucket list. It, it was. was. It was kind of, like, on the back of my bucket list, you know? I'm like, okay, like, whatever, you know, I, I want to make it more on TV, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. um, that opportunity came across where the photographers, we work really good together. Um, mm-hmm. He was like, hey, I have this vision, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to really try to pitch it, let's see, da 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 and I'm just kind of going with the flow. Yeah. And I'm in flow. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, my God, they picked up the, the, the picture. <laughs> oh, so that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it was it was cool. It was so like, when wow. you when you first picked that magazine up and you uh-huh. saw yourself, you know, what yeah. what did you think to yourself? Like, like, wow, like I've really made it into a magazine. That's 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 still yeah. a big thing. Right. I kind of wanted to like be in the middle of like Target at that time and be like, ah! oh, man, <laughs> I'm just like, you know, but I, I, I picked it up. I was like, OK, OK, like this is dope. Like, wow. OK, mm-hmm. cool. I'm like, my life is such a movie. OK. Hey, shout out <laughs> wow, to that. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thanks. Shout out to that. Praise because, God. you know, everybody doesn't get to experience that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you get to see yourself in that light and that's the crazy thing, too, like I feel like. You know, we have to start small before we go big. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like appreciate every step, exactly. you know, because it's only up. That's it. That's it. That's all. Only. It's only up and only it's stuck. Up. And that's became like one of my favorite slogans. It's only up. Shout out to Cardi, shout out to Cardi B for that. Oh, yeah. Now, let's talk about this nature side. Um, Burning sage. Now, I've heard that burning sage stinks, uh-huh. but um, I it's very it's something that's recommended. You yes. know what I'm saying. So what got you into burning sage? And when did you first like? You know, does that smell ever bother you? No, it smells a little bit like weed, and I do smoke weed. So um, oh, so they don't a stink. little bit to I mean, so it kind of a, a little bit. Like I feel like it kind of like has like that kind of smell a little bit. Um, but I it doesn't bother me, and I like using it just to clear energy sometimes mm. like if i feel like stagnant energy in my car if i feel stagnant energy in my room you know 
or in the house. Like sometimes I just, you know, I like the smell, first of all. And I, you know, it just kind of does something for me. And it's like when I'm doing it intentionally, um, I'm really just sitting there also in my mind, just like clearing that energy. So, mm-hmm. Well, stagnant, stagnant energy. Uh, uh, speak, speak on what well, I know. Stagnant energy is like it's not going anywhere. Yeah. OK. Um, what what how do you typically feel that, though? Um, I feel the stagnant energy because I'm always in creative flow. I think I'm my most like happiest, my who China is when I'm creatively flowing. But sometimes I'll have blocks where I'm just like blah or just like, you know, like those those, like, you know, like where you just don't want to get out of bed and you're just like wanting to feel sorry for yourself or whatever reason. And you're just like, you know, what, I need to switch the energy up in this. You know, so. Some stage yeah. and you know get does back it work, on it. <laughs> does it work quickly or does it take time? I think more so. It's more of a mental thing. I think once I light it and I see the smoke, I'm like, all right, it's, we in a new time. You know right. I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. I feel that. I it's, feel that. <laughs> I I ain't gonna lie. I guess I felt like that this week. Like mm-hmm. I guess I felt kind of. More relaxed days ago this week. I mean, I mm-hmm. still got up, went to the gym every day. And that's another thing about right. going to the gym. It you don't feel like going to the gym every day. Some days you just kind of like, look, bro. Right. I don't know about today. Right. But you got to wake up and go. Yes. And I realize how crucial it is to be or to have that within my habits of going to the gym, Facts. but just for my mental health. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. when I'm not at the gym, it just some, um, I don't know. Like, you know, like it's the hormones, the endorphins. I don't know. But yeah. I I realize that I do need to like move my body. And that yeah. plays such a huge part to just like. I feel like, you know? yeah, I, I feel like the, you know, I've always felt like I needed to work out. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I don't know, like when I was, I, f- I think I thought this when I was a kid. Yeah. I felt like if in order for you to be happy, you're going to have to be in a gym making sure that you're in shape. Like, I don't right. know okay. where I got that from. But I've been the person who has who has been in great shape mm-hmm. and then out of shape, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember one day I was sitting on my couch and I probably I was as heavy as I'd ever been. Oh. And I was looking at TV and I just thought to myself, this ain't you. Right. No you know problem. what I'm saying? And it doesn't feel good. Like, I feel like I can't operate at the highest level if I'm not yeah. taking care of my health. Exactly. And that's crazy. Like, but I mean, it's, it's scientific. It's, it's just human nature. You know what I'm saying? When you working out, when you eating right, you just you just operate better. Right. You know, and one thing I one thing I just like one thing I can't settle for is is like I, I get like I can't I can't stay stagnant for too long. Yeah. Um. It. It just it gets very concerning for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's one thing I like about being on this creative journey is is no you don't stay stagnant. Exactly. You don't stay especially all the time. Especially with these two on my team, uh, BTW Entertainment, whoop, whoop. Ellie and Sneaks. Um, okay. We are constantly having conversations about things of how we can get better. You know that's what I'm awesome. saying? They're always you know pushing me to do better. We're always pushing each other to do better. So shout out to that because they say okay. teamwork make the dream work, and that's no cap. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) No cap at all. So the biggest adventure, perfect. The biggest adventure you can ever take is to live the life of your dreams. You filled a void in your life, right? Mm -hmm. There was a void in your life. What type of void was that? Um, The void, I think, was just of something new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I felt like I explored a lot. Um. But just something new. Mm-hmm. So that, I think that was the void. The, mm-hmm. the, the void of discovering a new side of myself. But I needed that. Um, I needed a new percep- perspective mm-hmm. of going somewhere else to mm-hmm. uh, bring some more clarity back mm-hmm. to like who China was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we know, you, you know, you're very naturistic. How much do you go, you know, to these places where it's just nature and you, you sit and bask in the moment? How much does that? Because like for me... Uh-huh. It's, it's the views of L.A. So, you right. know, I can go to like Kenneth Hahn or I can go to uh, like my I guess my favorite spot now is Runyon Canyon. Oh, okay, nice. You go to uh-huh. the top of the mountain and you see oh, everything. Yes, right. And I don't know. I, don't, I can't explain what it does to me. But I think the one thing I thought about was how many people I can impact. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When right. I would see that, it was like it's like inspiring. Like, look at all these mm-hmm. people you can impact. So what is so how is nature that recharge for you? Um, It just grounds me there's nothing like taking like your shoes off and putting it like to the soul of the earth the Mm -hmm. soil of the earth Mm -hmm. and kind of just like connecting sometimes breathing in and like 
being around trees and mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like I romanticize everything in my life. But okay. like when I am around like nature, I just feel so happy. I'm just like a little kid. It brings back that childlike energy, you mm. know, not childish energy, but childlike energy of like who, you know, my child, you know, like just being at the park. I love going to parks. Mm -hmm. I go to the park like probably like four times a week, like after the gym. Mm -hmm. I'll just go and just like maybe walk a lap or just mm -hmm. sit down and just like um, chill. Mm -hmm. After today, like today I have a show and I'm like, oh, I have a couple of hours. I'm probably going to go to a park. I have my blanket in my car. Mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. have a book in my back seat. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, just or a journal, you know, yeah. just sometimes get in that time. What's your <laughs> So what, what's your favorite book to read in a setting like that? I like a lot of spiritual books, like okay. spiritual, just like self help books, mm -hmm. um, present moment books. Got you. Yeah. Present moment. That's yes. big because, yes. especially now, sometimes it's hard to be in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes having a conversation with somebody, you see other people you feel like you want to talk to, and it's like, oh, I want to get to them. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, uh, when you read those books, how much has that helped you focus on being in the present moment even more? Because, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like, um, I can get anxious. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I can right. go through that too. But what is what what is a what is what is a book like that? How does that help you set your mind in, into the right set? Um, because I think presently, like if you can, you know, learn to be in the present moment, um, I think it just makes life so much easier. You know mm. what I mean? Because mm -hmm. again, when I talk about this flow state, you're mm. in that flow state of just like not like thinking about the future too much to the point where you're having anxiety or mm -hmm. not thinking about the past so much that like you're kind of depressed for the day. Yeah. So just kind of staying in that moment. And again, that's how my creative like energy, like when I'm like creative, mm -hmm. I need to be in that present moment to like, you know, really like create. Yeah. Thoughts. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. I mean, well, when you're in that moment, you can capitalize on everything that's around you. Exactly. Instead of thinking about two weeks from now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. I heard I heard this guy by the name of Inky Johnson, motivational speaker mm -hmm. speaker. He said, Man, so many of us are so concerned about what's going on tomorrow and the next day. Mm -hmm. You know, but but what about what's going on today? Like, right. you know, if, well, you t you rob yourself of the moment mm -hmm. when you're just thinking about the future so much. Yeah. But but you know, a lot of us are so um goal driven. It's just it's difficult, but it that's a part of mental health too. You know what I'm saying? You got to really learn how to live in the moment. You know, so deep breaths, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real, man. Shout out to that. So here, here, here's one of these things, right? Um, Jay Dilla, oh, yeah. freestyling. Oh, yes. What them bars like though? My bars. Yeah. What 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 is them bars like? My bars. Yes. Oh my god, I go. crazy. Crazy stupid. <laughs> it's so crazy. I go crazy stupid. Little C from the IE. Okay. Oh, like, she spit. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel yeah, that. don't play. I'm 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 completely hyping myself up right now. Cause sometimes you gotta do that. But you know what? I I love rapping. Mm. I love I, I actually look at like freestyling like a mental exercise of just improv. Yeah. You know, so sometimes it's not even for anybody else, but I really be like Issa Rae in my bathroom, like getting ready, like yeah, da da da, da I'm about to end up, you know, like yeah. just, but I'm just, you know, just being creative and right, playing with my rhymes, my thoughts. It also makes you really good at comebacks too. Oh like yeah, if somebody try to roast you, you're like, you know. That freestyle just see, like trains your mind in a certain way. See, I ain't and never I really did music. too good with the roasting. <laughs> I ain't never really did too. I had, I had, I be having periods where I'm funny, right. but then for the most part. I, I'm just not too good with the roast. Like, I don't know. I get, I get ate up. It keeps me on my toes. It keeps me on my <laughs> nah, toes. Nah, for real, though. Yeah, like so, it. okay, uh, speak on Jay Dilla's impact. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, Jay Dilla is a legend. Right. You know, he's a legend. When did you first start? When did you first pick up on Jay Dilla and start, you know, doing your freestyling? Um, I think I started listening to Jay Dilla a lot around the time when I was doing IE radio because okay, we would always so have like radio. his instrumentals playing in the background yeah. and I would always have the headphones on and we would always be talking and those like beats would always just be living in my head and it also kind of reminded me of my childhood because my mm. stepdad would, you know, play like, you know, a lot of like Slum Village and just mm. like different, you know, samples that Jay, you know, and I'm like, damn, Jay Dilla like literally does like so many different like yeah. to even like the songs that we hear now, you know yeah. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. his beats are so um 
legendary and has really changed like the industry in a very impactful way and i feel like that's a fact (laughs) no that's a fact how i mean how often do you appreciate just being able to listen to a beat um Mm -hmm. because you know a lot of the time you know the lyrics that we're listening to may not be the best you know what i'm saying how often do you like like shout out to the beat cds i think that's really a great like shout out to uh shout out to mars mike and keys and them for making that beat for the making that beat tape because you can just listen to the beat and vibe. Exactly. And you yeah. can put your own words to it. Facts. You know what I mean? So I do like beats and I do, I think beats, you know, that is a story sometimes of, of the song. No, you facts. Know? Facts. So are you into lyrics? Okay. Because uh-huh. for me, if the beat is tight, I can listen to it. Yeah. Or are, are you that person? If the beat is tight, no matter what they're talking about, you can listen to it. Or are you more for the lyrics? Um, I am definitely for the lyrics. Before, you know, like, it just depends on the setting. If I'm, like, hype and I'm with my friends, I don't care what the beat is saying. Just mm-hmm. something I could twerk to. You know what yeah. I mean? Something I can move to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. care what they're saying. But mm-hmm. I guess, like, on an average day of, like, what I listen to, I just try to, I try to be, I'm try to, I guess, um, you know, be more conscious on the lyrics that I'm mm-hmm. taking in, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes mm-hmm. because with a beat and you repetitively saying certain things sometimes yeah. could really like become affirmations on your life. And mm. um, yeah. I just been like more conscious on like what I'm kind of yeah. saying or what I'm yeah. chanting, yeah. you know, I feel, you know what? I feel that, yeah. um, you know, our, our tongue has a lot of power. Oh yeah. for sure. You know, like for this next event that we have coming up May 21st, Ooh. people are like, speak the people that you want to interview into existence i'm, I'm kind of like Ooh. yeah i mean hopefully you know i don't know but they like no speaking into existence speaking yeah. into existence and i've been hearing that a lot more right. lately and i'm like okay i'm gonna do that like the one interview i spoke into existence one of them was the wallow 267 interview okay nice i interviewed him the day of the show i wasn't even gonna go but when i decided to go i put it on twitter i said i'm gonna interview what i say i don't think i put that on twitter okay. but i said to myself i'm gonna meet while i'm gonna interview him tonight and boom that's what happened wow so it's like yes. it's like manifestation is real oh yeah it's really real you know you speak that positivity into the world you should get it back now december 13th you will meet talib kwali shout out to him because he does a yes. great job oh, he yeah. does Aww. a great freaking job that's my guy. and when Aww. i watched when i watched what he was doing on uprox I was like, Aww, our yes. style is very similar. Oh, our yes. style is very similar. Like from the intros to everything. Uh-huh. I was like, shout out to Talib Kweli. And you got to go onto his podcast yes. and meet Problem as well. Yes. Speak on the vibe with Talib Kweli. Okay. So first of all, I have a lot of people to shout out for this right here. But shout, shout, out. Out, shout out to R.A. the Rugged Man who was getting interviewed on the podcast. So R.A., he is like a legend rapper. Everybody know who R.A. the Rugged Man is. Mm -hmm. Um, We ended up becoming really good friends, and I ended up seeing him at a Conway the Machine show. Which is your favorite rapper. Yes, the night before the Twilib Quali interview. So he casually just mentions it, like, yeah, I'm going to go Twilib, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know you have to bring me. (laughs) Like, I don't know if I get a plus plus one. I'm like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. He's (laughs) like, oh, my God, fine. So, um I get to go, and then from there, it was just cool to just see production on that level because mm-hmm. I just love production, so it was cool to see it. And then um, shout out to my guy Steve who directs the show. I shout ended up Steve. meeting an awesome friend out yeah. of that situation, so yeah. I met a lot of people, yeah. you know, through that. And then pl- problem was getting interviewed next. I was like, can I get a picture? Problem? So ah, it's not that like, me, like really talk like that, but yeah. he was there. Well, so shout was out cool. to that. Now, when you see the production on that uh-huh. level. Um, what was that like? Like, you know, did you look at that like this is how it needs to be? You know, because yes. that's that's highest level. Um, I looked at it. I was like, wow, there's a lot of people up in here. That's kind of like what I was like, you know, looking at. Because when I do production, for the most part, it's like maybe me and another person. And maybe <laughs> if I'm lucky, another person. Yeah. And we get the job done. Mm-hmm. 
But there was a lot of people, you know, everyone had jobs and the cameras were so big and yeah. just mm -hmm. like, I'm like, oh, wow, like this mm -hmm. is really cool. And mm -hmm. then they have their post editing team, you know, yeah. so it's like a whole team. It's effort. a machine. Machine of yeah. like a lot of people, yeah. you know, to get yeah. this podcast to yeah. take off the way it is. And yeah. it, I think it's awesome. Yeah, no, shout out to that. I remember when I uh, went up, I saw Bootleg Kev's uh, podcast studio yeah. and I was like, damn, like this is Bootleg Kev's mm -hmm. studio. Like this shit is crazy. Right. <laughs> now, now, you would get to interview Conway the Machine, which is your favorite rapper. Uh, yes. What makes Conway the Machine your favorite rapper? Okay, by default, you know, Conway, he's he he is one of my favorite rappers. Okay. But what makes him so special is he was like one of the first big rappers that I interviewed and mm. someone that gave me a chance. Like, you know, I was like an independent, like I was doing like my IG live series at that mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of just like, I interviewed everyone in the IE. Mm -hmm. I interviewed like literally so many people. So I'm like, damn, I really, really, really want a big artist. Mm -hmm. Ended up reaching out to Conway's manager and he was like, shout out to my guy, freaking Chad. Shout out to shout Chad. Out Chad. Ended up reaching out to Chad and uh, Chad got me the interview with him. And this is like in the peak of him dropping his album. So like mm -hmm. this was like really big for him to have like an independent platform because, you know, he was getting interviewed at that time with mm -hmm. like Complex. Oh, He's yeah. Getting interviewed ones. with yeah. like Joe, but like a whole bunch of like bigger podcasts. And mm -hmm. I, you know, was there. Right. So it was cool. And then from there, I ended up just meeting everyone and pretty much in Griselda. Uh, that I met Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher, got, yeah. You know, and then we just started building a relationship. Anytime they come out to shows, and uh, my uh, the the promotion company that I um, out the house that I collab Shout with, out the house, yeah. Shout out out the house. We do a lot of shows with them, so I just run into them all the time. So it's just cool, you know. You know, shout out to Griselda for just Man. giving me a shot. That's and, what's up, yeah. Yeah, just being like cool people to me. Right. Yeah. The butcher coming. The you butcher know what I'm saying? Right. The butcher coming. <laughs> shout out to that, man. Now, the China show was on the Black Ink. What is it? Black Ink Crew? Compton? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ain't that something? You know what I'm saying? What you doing in Compton? <laughs> right. Random. Random. <laughs> Again, my life is a movie. So, yeah. um,. One of my homegirls was like, hey, like, you know, we're going to be filming for the show. And I think they're doing like a fundraiser. You should like go and interview. And so I get there and I never really seen the show. I really don't watch reality TV like oh, that. Wow. I, so I kind of like forgot how reality TV kind of was, you know. Yeah. So I get there and I sign the paperwork. And then so the director is kind of like, OK, like there is this guy right here. Go, you know, you should go talk to him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going over there, like, you know, just thinking that I'm interviewing. In the middle of me, like, talking to him, some girl walks up and she's like, oh, so this is what you want to do? You just being flirtatious over here? And I'm just wow. over here, like, what? And I'm over here, like, you know, like an organic response, like, what the? And then, you know, the cameras are all zoomed up. And oh, then they do that's a little crazy. Scene, and they do a little scene. And then they're like, okay, cut. And then everybody just, like, walks off. And I'm like, Oh, like, oh, so that so was a setup. Oh, oh, okay. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Like, Y'all got my genuine reaction because I'm just like, girl, I was just interviewing him. Like, <laughs> is this, is this like, She's like hold on, on wait a minute. What wait the hell is Like, I see you be flirtatious over here. I'm like, ah, and me and my homegirl are looking at each other like, this can't be real. Bruh, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Funny, right. <laughs> you got that 15 seconds of fame for I did, real. Right, right. I was like, wait a second. Yeah, hold on. I, I didn't sign better. up for I had for a better reaction. Like, yeah. excuse me, bitch. Like, I uh, maybe I could have got a longer scene up in there. You know oh, what I mean? hell like, no. Nah, that's funny. Me. That, that, is, that is freaking hilarious, man. <laughs> Shout out to that, though. No. Shout out to that, man. Shout out Black Ink Crew. Now, being a believer in manifestation in God, one of the other interviews you manifested was the Hit Boy oh, interview. Yes. Shout out to Hit Boy. Shout out to he just dropped the pro uh, dropped the song or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he right? dropped the whole project, which is really sick. Yeah. Excuse me, I need to tap into oh, that. Yeah. Tap into that. Project. Yeah, facts. Now, when you're interviewing Hit Boy, you know it's 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 the Hit Boy. Did you yes. just walk up to him? Or? Yes, and 
again, I like when we talked about manifestation, I am queen of that. Yeah. I always get everything I want. That's and, beautiful. Like I always just do. Yeah, I seen you posted the uh, person stuff the other day and was like, I always get what I want. I always do. I really do. That's like <laughs> the, to that. my reality I live in. But I manifested that. Like mm-hmm. I knew I was gonna interview him and I kept putting it on Twitter. And when I kept putting that, I was like, Oh, this is gonna be so nice when I interview him. I'm gonna put these Twitter Yeah, right. facts. Like, I Got a screen I knew yeah. I was gonna interview him. Yeah. So when the opportunity did come, I was like, okay, finally. Like I was kind of waiting on this. Um, so it was, it, was, it was it was cool. It was yeah, cool. It shout out to that. To. Yeah, shout yeah. out to that. Now in, engaged. Uh, the first episode was beautiful. Y'all was downtown LA oh, walking yes. through. The, now speak on what we can expect from engaged in twenty twenty three. Engaged in 2023, I think my audience is going to now see another side of myself because at the end of the day, I am like a a storytelling journalist. You know what I mean? So like I do appreciate like storytelling and I also appreciate like aesthetic production. Mm. So I do pride myself on that. And I like to, you know, I just I I just like to get creative in that way. So Mm. with Engage, like I plan on just having all forms of art, you know, Mm -hmm. before I was like so comfortable within like music. But Mm. now, like, I want to really stick to like what the China show is. Everyone has a story to tell. So I really want to start interviewing just different creatives and diving deep into their lives through open conversation Mm -hmm. and through like just stepping into their world, immersing myself mm-hmm. um, within them, like within, you know, within everything. And right. also, too, like, I like experiencing new shit as well. So it's like I like doing that with other people. And it's yeah. so much fun for me because I get to really engage mm-hmm. and I really have a good time. Yeah. And it's also just like very genuine conversation. Um Topics of whatever we're talking about. Or, well, you know, everyone's different. David, Sebastian. Just happened to be the perfect person to start the series off with mm-hmm. because um, of his awesome ideologies. And I knew it was just going to, like, draw people in. But people could expect more of, like, those type of open conversations um, to be had on Engaged. And yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, um, there's going to be a that. lot of different artists coming on. You guys will be surprised. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm having fun. Shout out to that. <laughs> I mean, shout out to that. They was outside, went on the bus, walked off the bus, all kind yes. of stuff. So <laughs> shout out to that. Make sure y'all tune in and engage. Yes. It's your boy Jay Brock is clapping up LA with the one and only China show. We out.